So I've created loads of videos and courses on creating backing track rigs, whether that be in QLab, Ableton, but I haven't done one in Logic yet. So here's how to create a backing track rig in Logic in its basic form. So for this video, I'm using Logic Pro, the most updated version that you find on Macs, but I'm gonna do it without an audio interface, but I will show you how you can do it with an audio interface. Two. So for starters, we want to create an audio track and that's going to house our backing tracks. Now, I've got some pre-made tracks from Epidemic Sounds to not hit copyright, but for you, obviously you'd import your backing tracks that you've pre-made. These will include drums, but if you're a drummer like me, then yours won't include drums and that whole thing. So just something to be aware of. Now, as you can see with these, I have also created a click and cues, but I'm not going to do that because we're going to do that together. So I'm just going to import the bass, drums and instruments because that's what the tracks are. Use existing tracks. Good to go. And this is what it sounds like. It, it goes on, it's a, it's a chunky song, but uh, yeah, there we go. I believe the tempo of that is 82 BPM. Da -da. I'm making this look like I know what the tempo is just from clicking. I don't, it's because I looked it up whilst I downloaded it, but we're gonna pretend that I can uh, just, yeah, 82 BPM, mate. Yeah, I got it. It has happened a few times, but. Moving on. So up here in Logic, I'm just gonna change that to 82 BPM and then just see where that sits with the click. Whoever exported this in Epidemic Sound, 10 points to Gryffindor, you absolutely nailed it. Let's skip to the end, see if it's done in time. That's a quite a chunky track, but that was really easy. If yours didn't sync up, then what I would do is, obviously this is beat one here where they all come in. So it's a case of zooming in and straight away, as you can see, they all come in just a little after each other because it's live musicians and that's what happens. So for me, I would choose the drums because that's got the most obvious hit. I'd highlight it all. I'd move this playhead to beat two, so it's bang on, and then I'd click and drag it accordingly. That can be a little bit finicky and fiddly, but once you've got it, then we're good. So next what I want to do is create our click track. So I'm just gonna use a software instrument and it's just gonna be a basic click and I'm using all of the inbuilt sounds here in Logic. So I'm just gonna to go to orchestral, percussion, orchestra kit. And if you've seen any of my other videos on backing tracks, then this will sound very familiar. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna remove all of the effects because I want it to be a nice dry click. And what I'm gonna do, take the pencil tool, draw in one bar. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top where there's a wood block. I like to highlight the first note with the first beat the first beat with the higher note, and then create the bar. Highlight them all and turn the velocity to 127, so it's super loud. Beautiful. You could keep that absolutely fine, no problems at all, and you could loop that for the rest of it. But what I like to do is I like to add the eighth note like on a shaker, because then it makes a slow tempo like this feel a little bit easier, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna highlight that, Ooh, highlight that, but I'm gonna change the velocity down to about 80-ish because that just makes it a little bit less obvious and in your face. It gives it, basically it gives the click a bit of a groove. So it sounds like this. So straight away, it's a lot easier to feel, especially at a slow tempo. So what I can do now is I can loop that all the way to the end. Now you're probably thinking, why don't I just use the inbuilt click? And you absolutely can, but it's because of routing. So when we come to output this in a little minute, we've now got much more control over how it's outputted. But before we do that, let's add our second track. So the first thing straight away is my second track is a different tempo. So to automate the click in Logic, we're gonna use the little drop down up here and we're also going to use this to mark up our tracks but again I'll get to that in a second so as you can see tempo here I'm going to click in to 82 and then over here I'm going to click in again because my next track is a tempo that I cannot remember gonna have to google it is 102 bpm so I'm just going to click on I'm going to zoom in where is it there it is click on the little dude there and then just 102 102 there we go. And now when it hits that point, the click will be there. I did also create this, but I don't actually need to because Logic is great. So I can just delete that and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now, track three, bass, drums, instrument. I'm gonna try and keep all on the same tracks because what we can do is we can mix that and we can just send out one output for all of them. Let's check our click by turning on the Logic click. These guys are great. Whoever exported this, top job, good job. But this is what this is what the track sounds like. Ch 
chunky. I'm gonna skip to the end again, just to check that that's still in time. Perfect. And you'd repeat this for however many songs you have. So for the next song, I'd go ahead and move the click up and automate it that way. And why we're doing this is because for this click MIDI, it means that now as I copy and paste, there we go, I'm gonna change the loop so it reaches the end of the track, but it means that that is now also going to be in time because I've created it to the grid on Logic. So let's just check that with the, uh, the MIDI click. Easy as that. And as you can see, our original click has stayed the same where we've added the eighth note shaker and it's just adjusted to the tempo. Perfect. So like I said, we wanna now mark up our tracks because if you had a full gig here, you wanna know which song is which. You can either use two things here. You can use the arrangement where you can go intro and then verse and it does it automatically or you can do a marker where you can add that there and you can go song one and then you can add another marker, verse, one. Oh, if you spell it correctly, that'd be good. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. Doesn't really matter. Just find whichever one works for you. So once we've put all our tracks, we've marked it up, we've changed the tempo. The last thing we want to do is outputs. Now there's two ways you can do this. The first one is just out of your Mac with no audio interface. So what you can get is something like the Behringer P1 and a jack to XLR cable. And so what you do is you pan the click to the left and then all of the tracks to the right. You'd plug the cable into a headphone output. You'd give the click XLR to yourself into a little headphone mixer, and then you'd give the other XLR to the sound engineer and they'd have all of the tracks, and you're pretty much good to go. But if you were like me and you had something like the Focusrite 18920, then what you can do is actually use the outputs up here. So the click, for example, if you had it plugged in, which I don't have it plugged in, I'm very sorry, but you just change the output to say output one, for example, and then the bass to output two, and then the drums to output three, and that sort of thing. And that's where it starts getting really cool, where you can hand the sound engineer four different channels, or however many channels you need for your gig, and you've got full control over the whole thing. Lastly, what you can also do is MIDI control this, so when you get to the end of a track, you can auto stop it, or you can control it with an SPD-SX. So you can just hit the SPD and it will play, and it starts getting really cool like that. I've done a full video on MIDI control in Logic, so if you'd like to see that, you can check out the video just up there. And you can create your masterful logic template. And with that, if you've got any fun questions and things like that, or you want to chat to me, you can check out the Patreon link down below where I've got loads of information on like my opinion on things and a lot more extra stuff. And it's, it's a really cool place to be. So link in the description down there. And with that, I hope you enjoy playing backing tracks out of logic.